Did you have any uh, Christmas wishes? What do you want this year? I want peace on earth. There's no fighting in here. I think it kind of works. Our family doesn't fight. What would you say? Our family doesn't fight. Oh, I thought you said bite. Oh. I, don't like, I don't know why you brought that up. Are you sure? She looks like a biter. Uh, ah, ah. Really open. <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. We're all the people who are a little bit different. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. How are you, Monday? How y'all doing? How you doing? Good. Well, let us start, if we could, let us start with this. Every dog has their own unique skill set, we'll call it, you know? Like Mr. Big, my friend's bulldog. Uh, but some are more specific than others. Look at this. This is Maggie, the hockey goalie. Now, it looks like she's not that great of being a goalie, but that's because she specifically waits for the hockey puck right there. Let's see it again. Boom! One more time. No, 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 and... Boom! Right there. Yes. She is more than ready, my friends. More than ready. Obviously, she lives here in Minnesota. Yeah, let's just say that. Okay, Leo, cue it. Let's start the show. Let's do this. Here we go. Happy Monday. Uh, this is the beginning of your final week with it us. Is. That's Our right. Last Monday. I know. Mm -hmm. Your last Monday putting up with me. <laughs> I know. What happened to you while I was gone, by the way? I know. I'm hobbling a little bit. I apologize. Did yeah. Aaron hurt you while I was gone? Uh, yeah. Aaron beat me up after Friday's show. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, no, I, I hurt my uh, right big toe, which sounds ridiculous, but I'm, I'm hobbling a little bit. That's why I'm wearing my little orthopedic shoes, and uh, <laughs> I don't have my dress shoes on, but yeah. Uh, you know what? It's rough. You know? Aren't you going to, like, Disney in a week? I am. I'm leaving. <laughs> I know. Uh, Colin has reminded me that, yes. That he will not wait for you? He will. will yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, Colin's not coming for the first four oh, days. Oh, yeah. okay. I, Look out, I, Disney. I'm, I'm by myself for the first four days, and then he'll join me a little bit later. But, yeah. Um, Does that... Hey. Yeah. Wow. I, I love that. I, I like that the yeah. audience is clapping for me being solo. Yeah. 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 Well, they know that gives you more time to hit on groups of women while That's you're there. Me, yeah. <laughs> I do. Sup, ladies. Yeah, you know, sup, lady. Yeah, the last, <laughs> if you missed that episode, the last time I was there, and I don't know why this happened, but I was walking alone. Again, you're right. Don't <laughs> I should never be alone. I'm walking alone, and I come across three or four women in their late 50s, early 60s. And, I mean, I'm not, I'm just going to tell you, not that you don't know this already, but I'm as gay as a Golden Girls reunion. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. and I'm walking toward... I'm walking, yeah, I'm walking toward these three women, and as they pass me, I go like this. What's up, ladies? <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's like, why? And why did I do that? And then, and then I immediately get a voice memo from Jason, who's like, oh, my God, I don't know why I just did this. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know who to text. I texted Fallon, I go, I just hit on women. Yeah. I, <laughs> 
Just, I don't know why I did that. That's why Colin should not leave you alone I know. for four days. Good Lord, I could come back with a wife and a couple kids, by the way, yeah. Congrats. Now, now the audience is clapping for me being straight. Yeah. I know, oh, it's fine. Yeah. I was straight for a couple years, yeah, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I had a good run in the late 80s, early 90s, you know. <laughs> had a couple girlfriends. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Went to prom three times. Wow. So you were popular. Yeah, yeah. I was. Yeah, all right. What's up, ladies? That's right, yeah. <laughs> What's up, ladies? <laughs> I know. I, I, if I say that one more time, I'm not going to be allowed in headquarters. No. <laughs> I gotta, yeah. Anyway, let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Can we get can we get a shot of the of the people over there? Look, they all Eric's making his way over there. All of the folks in the first couple rows have spoons. Love it. Yeah, it I is. love it. I love it. Okay. Well, first up, a uh, first up, a shakeup at Jeopardy. My and Bialik's run as co-host is coming to an end. That's right. <laughs> just like Fallon. They're just like, yeah, yeah. Um, the actress posted this on Instagram. She said that Sony, which owns and produces Jeopardy, told her she will no longer be hosting the show. Oh. She went on to say that she's incredibly honored and grateful uh, for the opportunity. Sony uh, said, yep, Ken Jennings will be the sole host for syndicated Jeopardy. Now, Mayim and Jennings had been splitting the hosting duties, and according to our friends over there on Deadline, Mayim stepped away from the game uh, this summer because of the strike in solidarity with Hollywood writers. And Ken finished taping all of Mayim's episodes, which I, I don't know if that sat well yeah. with the executives, so that probably added to it. They're saying that they just want consistency and continuity across the brand. That's fair. I and mean, I, yeah. I actually get that. I mean, you know, if you are... You know, Betty from Anoka, and you're sitting there and you gotta kind of constantly wonder who's hosting. Mm -hmm. I get it right. I, 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 if I'm producing that show, but they, but they kind of got themselves in this mess right off the beginning, right off the start. They should have just said, okay, Ken, you're gonna do the syndicated version, and Mayim, you're gonna do the prime time or the specials, and that's it. Right. But they kept mixing things around, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's on them. And now, like, I love how she worded it. Sony let me know I will no longer be hosting. That's yeah. kind of how she worded it. Like, oh, okay, oh. yeah. You know how this business is rough. It's so rough. Very yeah. rough. <laughs> you find out with a little letter or something, yeah. Or, like, in a People magazine. Like, or, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't have a job anymore, okay. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Next to the dish, you know you've made it when you get roasted by the queen of pop. During her concert in New York, Madonna spotted Andy Cohen in the audience and uh, instantly called him out. Watch. If you say one more bad thing about me on your show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna be in so much trouble. Yeah, well, Andy mouthed. <laughs> yeah, Andy mouthed, I love you to Madonna from the crowd. He says uh, that he's a longtime fan. And he wrote that he's honored to be called a troublemaking queen by her. <laughs> then he also shared a compilation of his mentions of Madonna from his show, Watch What Happens Live. So, look, they're friends. I don't care if Madonna made fun of me. I wouldn't, just to be acknowledged no by kidding, her. No kidding, yeah. Yes, Absolutely. come on. Yeah. Also, when you get to the level of Andy Cohen, you can't just like be nice to everyone you know and you're friends with because he knows pretty much everyone in Hollywood. He wouldn't be true to himself in a show if he did that. So if he calls her out occasionally, that's probably shows that he's a good host. Yes. So. And if you're going on the air every night, like we do here, you're going on the every night, you're commenting on pop culture, you can't like everything exactly. and everyone all the right. time. Right. If you're doing, you know, a day, yeah. Well, next in the dish, SNL brought uh, back a few familiar faces for its Christmas for its Christmas show. Kate McKinnon took on ho thank you for clapping, Roll yeah, Three. Yeah. Kate McKinnon, one of our favorites, took on hosting duties. Plus, there were a few cameos from former famous cast members. Look at this. 
It's ABBA Christmas, featuring 15 brand new Christmas classics as well as 85 holiday remakes of their existing songs. <laughs> like their Fa La La number, sung with their signature, standing close, facing different directions. Maya Rudolph and Kristen Wiig are back. <laughs> they appeared in a couple sketches. The one sketch was actually my favorite, but I didn't want, this is our last live week of the year, <laughs> so I don't want emails this week, but there was a great skit, um, you know which one I'm talking yes, about. Yeah. yeah, it was, I'm just gonna say it, who cares? Uh, it was called Tampon Farm, <laughs> and yeah, it was great. But, but again, Jason, you shouldn't say that word. You know, I, don't, I didn't want that this week, but it was, yeah, I mean, yeah. thank you. Hello, we gotta use them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but my point being, it was a really good skit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whether you use them or not. So that's right, right, right yeah. Right, right. We're gonna take a break, go get some more coffee. We'll be back after this. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> We're having a real fun time in the studio today. Yes! yes. <laughs> last week tonight with John Oliver was all new last night for the final episode of the year. And John poked fun, you know, was, this is, I love when he does this, at newscasters talking about a certain holiday dish. Watch. not understand this holiday dessert. I don't think I've ever tasted fruitcake. No, I haven't. Yeah. Well, I did once, and I never will again. Mm, there you go. Well, I tried the fruitcake once, and I was yeah. like, why, why? I, 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 get I don't it. get it. Have you ever had a good fruitcake? Um, I've heard they exist. That fruitcake that they would make would last until July 4th. It's a nuclear war food. I put it in the category with Twinkies. It could survive anything, and for that, I do not want to eat it. Look, I brought a fruitcake to the dinner. I Nobody don't know. Does. I think people do that. Okay. I think they do. I think that's a thing. I think they know no one's going to eat it. Here's what you do with fruitcake. You make it, and then you put it in the garbage. I mean, who buys that? I don't know, but stop it. What exactly is pound cake? Delicious. It, it is. Really? It is just, yeah. It, what do you mean by really? Isn't that the one with the fruit, fruit gelled inside of oh, it? No, 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 that's, that's a fruit cake. cake. Uh, that's like what you want. No, that's yeah, trash. No. <laughs> I guess I'm back. Okay. <laughs> it's time for a special serving a hot dish all the way from Hollywood. And coming up in a little bit, though, are they ready to go? They're not ready to go? Yep. They're ready to go. That's right. right. Please give it up for Brad from TMZ. Hi, Brad. Good morning, Jason. I'm, I'm ready to go. Happy Monday. You're ready to go, buddy. Hey, uh, by the way, you were looking very dapper, my friend. I saw pics from the TMZ holiday party. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's the, the one day a year I dress up and I take off the, the flannel and, and, and look nice for everybody here. <laughs> well, first, let's get to some sad news. This broke right off after we got off the air on Friday. You guys broke it. New details about what uh, the cause of death for Matthew Perry. What do we know? Yeah, I mean, this was, this was kind of shocking, Jason, because I think a lot of people didn't realize that he had been getting ketamine therapy and uh, they, they labeled his cause of death acute effects of ketamine use. Um, but it's interesting because we know he had been doing this ketamine therapy to help with his de depression, anxiety, and other medical issues. He had been doing it for quite a while, every other day. Then about six months ago, he got a new doctor that started to wean him off, thought that he was doing better. Uh, his depression was lessening, he was active, he was healthy. Uh, but it was really interesting because the coroner's report said that he actually had, um, he had not gotten ketamine therapy for about a week and a half before his death. Uh, but the levels of ketamine in his system 
uh, were equal to what doctors sometimes use to put patients under as anesthesia. So it's really unclear if he had gotten this on his own, if he had done it somewhere else, or what had really happened leading up to his death, but it's possible this could trigger another investigation. So either way, no matter which way, it's just tragic. So tragic. Yeah. Next yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's awful. Yeah. Next up, some drama with Anita Baker. She's catching some heat. She got testy with, with an audience in Texas. What did she do? Yeah, she, uh, she had a massive show in Houston over the weekend. And, of course, a lot of people pay a lot of money to see Anita Baker sing her hits. But there's some videos going around of her getting upset with some fans in the first row. Now, uh, she'll be in the middle of a song. She's still hitting her notes and everything. And then she scolds the fans. And then she says, hey, security, get them out of here. I mean, she did it in a very kind of elegant and graceful way where she's scolding these fans. But as for what really happened, a few audience members did get on social media and said, look, there were a bunch of people who would kind of rush to the front row and kind of try and get a picture or get close to Anita or whatever. And and security really wasn't doing their job of keeping these fans away. So, of course, she was getting frustrated. She's trying to concentrate on her performance and, and give everybody a good time. And there were these few fans that ruined it for everybody. So, look, she didn't cut the show early or anything like that. It was just kind of annoying, I think, to her and, uh, and some of the people around. Finally, Bradley Cooper has an unusual rule on his movie sets. Uh, he's not a big chair guy, I hear. <laughs> N no chairs. You gotta if you're if you're on a Bradley Cooper set, you gotta have some strong legs because he said, "Look, I don't allow chairs in my sets or around my sets when we're filming a project because he says it takes the energy away. He said it drains the actors. It kind of drains the crew. Uh, maybe we'll have a couple things that people can sit on nearby if they absolutely need to. Uh, but he says, "Look, no chairs uh, when you're working with me." <laughs> I know, right? Drama. <laughs> that, that rule starts Monday right here. That's right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, and we're on vacation energy. on Monday. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Have a good holiday yeah. if I don't talk Thanks, to you. Jason. Thank you. More at TMG.com. That is crazy. They, I mean, they'll be on film sets for like 12, 18-hour days. Yes. I would be like... It's been real, Bradley, but yeah. uh, my back is killing. I got to sit. Yeah. yeah, no chance. I would want a lazy boy. Yes, I mean, you know, exactly. when a chair. It's all, I mean, I get, yeah, my energy does dip. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's not wrong, but I mean, I just, you know, that's why so I'm so. So we should have had you stand for four months? Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Yeah. Too late. Too late. Imagine how chaotic I would have been if oh, I was standing. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. More hot dish for you. Last week, I gave you my review of Wonka. I loved it. Spoiler alert, uh, with Timothy Chalamet, or Timothy, uh, the musical origin story was number one at the box office, uh, pulling in $39 million. Well, Wonka is one of two musicals from Warner Brothers this holiday season. The Color Purple opens on Christmas Day, and it may, yeah, I can't wait to see it. I'm excited to see it. And it may uh, signal a rebound for movie musicals, which haven't historically done not all of them do well at the box office. Well, that may be why they haven't been marketed as musicals. So according to Deadline, quote, test audience focus groups generally hate musicals. And the only way to get... <laughs> Aaron Schwab just passed out. I yeah. Know, yeah. And the only way to get people into butts and seats of the theater is to trick them. Uh -huh. if, if they get in the door and wind up enjoying themselves, then business is solid for a studio on a musical. And you pointed this out right when we showed the new Mean Girls trailer. Yeah. You said, wait a minute. It's a musical, and they didn't show a single musical moment in the first trailer they revealed. Yeah. And I think it was on purpose. I think it's going to be amazing. It's going to be. But I, like... I love this trickery. I don't think La La Land was like trickery at all, but I'll never forget I went to the theater with my friend and the opening number they start singing and she goes, is this a musical? <laughs> and I go, it is. And she was like, oh my God. Yeah. She's like, she was so upset. And well, and <laughs> that's wa awesome. Wonka, Wonka doesn't really no. show a lot in the trailer. It is a musical. It is, absolutely. It's, like, a, it's great. 
I mean, if I wasn't in the mood for a musical, I would be a little upset if I had been tricked. Yeah. But whatever. Whatever they got to do to get you in the theater, yeah, I guess. Yeah, because it is. It's Mean Girls, Color Purple, Wonka. Mm -hmm. Is Aquaman a mean? No, Aquaman's <laughs> not. That's open to. Jason Momoa actually, is known, yeah. Actually, that would actually make the box office better if Aquaman was <laughs> a musical. I don't know if that's going to do well. Well... Next in the dish, it's a wrap for Brian Gumble after 29 seasons. The final episode of his much award-winning show, Real Sports, on HBO. The last season premieres this week. Bryant sat down with CBS Sunday morning host uh, Jane Pauley, who, if you're my age or older, you'll remember, was uh, actually his former co-host on NBC's Today Show. Here, he's talking about his reputation for being a little prickly. Watch. Not to say he was easygoing. I was kind of the cactus of the garden. Yeah, you were prickly. Prickly. That's prickly. the prickly word. Prickly is a good word. Still, the garden grew. Today, ratings climbed. Gumble scored coups with the big newsmakers of the day. Though sometimes he was the newsmaker. It's something he considers now with the wisdom of age and hindsight. I've said a lot of dumb things that, as I stand from a distance of a 75-year-old, you sit there and you go, wow, how can I have said that? So, um, I'll apologize. <laughs> yeah, I'll get back to that in a second. As for the end of Real Sports, Gumbel says his contract was up and he decided, you know what? I don't want to stay. wanted him to sign for three more years. He goes, nope, I don't want to do three more years. Again, I'm old. I, my first morning show, we were a morning news uh, house in my, in my family. My, my papa and grandma watched it. My mom uh, watched the Today Show. My first TV memories, a lot of them are Brian Gumbel and Jane Pauley. Mm. And, and then moving on, then it was Bryant and Katie. Brian always did have that reputation. If you Google him, there, there were, Jane pointed a couple of them out. There were uh, more than a few scandals. And Katie, uh, my buddy Katie Couric talked about how they were adversarial, but it, the, the electricity kind of worked for those two. Uh -huh. And Bryant, you know, for instance, uh, now this is getting real technical, but this is an example. He was a little antiquated with this thought. Whenever it was, whether, whether it was Jane or Deborah Norville or then Katie, Brian was always the anchor and the woman would always be called the co-anchor. Mm -hmm. um, it was never like a split evenly until Katie when Bryant left, Katie uh, became the main anchor, but she said she didn't want that title. She made it even between her and Mervy Pervy Matt Lauer. <laughs> and then they were both co-anchors. Yeah. yeah. One wasn't the anchor and one wasn't the co-anchor. And believe me, you're thinking, why does this matter? Uh, I've been in this business for a long time. You would, you would be surprised at what matters to people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there are still news anchors that count how many words each of them say compared to the others, yeah. <laughs> I've never worked with people like that. <laughs> Ooh, the stories I could tell, yeah. Oh, Jason has 17 more words than I do, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, people's mouths are open. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> happened, yeah. We continue to get boxes full of your Christmas cards in our annual Jason Show Christmas card exchange. Let's go to another live picture of our mail room where uh, cards are arriving every day right there. <laughs> again, our mail room is bigger than our studio. Look at that. There we go. There they are. Yeah. Now, again, uh, I want you to keep sending them because the, the, <laughs> okay. yeah, the, exe the, the executives in this building have to hand address all of them, and that makes me so happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they, they send us emails every day. Could you please help us autograph? No. No. <laughs> I'm gonna, I want to highlight a few. First up, a card from a viewer in Washington. Uh, Ulysses and Laurel from Tacoma sent this beautiful card. And uh, thank you. Uh, thanking the show for making their weekdays bright. No. Again, Washington has been very, very kind to our show. So thank you. Next is Joan in Danville, California. She sent us this card featuring her oldest son's wedding in Mexico. She says she loves the show and is spreading the word in Northern California. I want to be in that family. No Look at that family. <laughs> can, can Fallon and I come to the next event, please? <laughs> yeah. And finally, Roxanne in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, sent this card with her dog. Aww. 
Yeah, she says, I'm sending the picture of my adorable dog, Cooper, to get six of your cards sent back to me so I can use them as surprise gifts for some serious Jason fans. <laughs> yeah, we'll send them to you. Thank you, everybody. Six. We'll send you six. Okay, lovely. We'll send you six. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. TikTok superstar, that Midwestern mom is back. It's cocktail hour. In our studio, mixing up another Minnesota salad, and she is singing. Can't wait for that. And we're opening up the Jason Show mailbag to see what you have to say about our show this week. That and more when we come back. salads uh, many people in the Midwest grew up with, uh, grew up eating without thinking twice about how odd that salad might actually be. <laughs> well, and now the whole country seems to be rediscovering them thanks in part to this social media star. The whole internet is in a tizzy about Watergate salad again just because Kelly McDuff brought it to the work potluck. Kelly and I brought the Watergate salad. And then Jordan was going to call the police on us. You make it great. If you want to call the police, I also understand. When I've been eating Watergate salad since I was old enough to eat, start with your largest Tupperware bowl that everyone owns in the Midwest. By the way, was this your popcorn bowl or your barf bowl? Not or both. <laughs> That's Amber, a.k.a. that Midwestern mom, who has been sharing her love for Minnesota salads for years and years on TikTok. Welcome back to the show, our friend, that Midwestern mom, Amber, everybody. <laughs> Hi, love. Hi. Welcome back. You match uh, the you. the winter, uh, the holiday yeah. background. That's right. I always love when the guest matches the set. So <laughs> how you doing? I'm great, thank you. Okay, can I now, again, you haven't been here since uh, we've had new cities. So uh, I'm sure people in Orlando and uh, maybe even Chicago, they're thinking Watergate salad. Is it uh, like a Nixon salad or what is it? What is this? Uh, what uh, did he like it in the White House or what? What is a Watergate salad? Well, it's we call it pistachio fluff salad. It really was invented because it was there was a Watergate cake first at the Watergate Hotel. The sous chef invented the salad. Um, they kind of said at the end of the Watergate scandal, they said, well, like the White House, Watergate salad is full of nuts. So oh. that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> But it really yeah. wasn't. It really was just because there was a Watergate cake. Don't write me. It's a 50-year-old yeah. joke. <laughs> it's been out there forever, so you can't at me either. <laughs> Jason, it's you said you don't do political Google. stuff. It's you don't do political. It's a 50-year-old person. He's no longer with us. Okay, there we go. I can just see it now. So, anyway, yeah. so uh, now what exactly is it? It is just, it's the easiest recipe ever. You can act like you've been cooking this all night, all afternoon in the kitchen. You know, you just take your can of crushed pineapple juice Okay, and all. stop though. What? First of all, is this an antique bowl? It is. Okay. I got I, it on eBay. Can I say? My grandma Mazak had, I can tell an antique bowl from like 60 yards. That is a fantastic so bowl. Yeah. I love I'm it. sorry, yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah. So you take your can of crushed pineapple juice and all. Um, do not follow the recipes that say you need milk with this pistachio pudding because the, the pineapple will curdle it. And you, you mix the pistachio pudding right into so the pineapple. If you see this recipe, it says milk, avoid it. Like avoid a it. monkey yeah. showing its teeth it, to you. It yeah. literally yeah. just, you dump this powder right into the pineapple and you mix it up and that's the base of the salad. That's the base? That's the base. That's basically 50% yeah. of it? Yes, it is. Wow. Yep. This is real hard. Guess what the other 50% the other is. Okay, let me think. Just um, guess. Let me guess. Uh, 90% of your salads have Cool Whip. Yeah. That's right. That's and then it. and then I call all of my followers my little marshmallows. Your mar so. oh, marshmallows is in this as well? Yeah, of course it is. And again, I know, <laughs> if you're in from other part, you're wondering, you're thinking to yourself, there is no lettuce, there are no, no croutons. Why yeah. is this a salad? Yeah. This is a salad to us. It is a salad this to us. This is a salad to us. Do you remember us. like five years ago or so when there was a there, there was a problem with romaine lettuce and, and 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 we couldn't eat romaine lettuce or something at the holidays? So yeah. there was there was a big meme around that said, you know, save everyone's life. Eat, eat marshmallows with marshmallows in your salad, you know, yeah. marshmallow salads instead of romaine lettuce salads. So um, you're so telling I've me been, I've been saving the world. You, you have know? been. <laughs> so right now, if I'm doing the math, you're 75% done with that I salad. Am. Yeah, yes. Uh huh. It's really hard work. Oh, 
All jokes aside, though, I, I asked you a version of this. Um, what is the reaction? Because you're worldwide. What is the reaction from people um, that are not from here? Yeah, the reg how can you call that a salad? Well, a salad really was anything that was cold in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. You know, we just... We I, ate yeah. weird things we in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. We yeah. did. And it was so funny that it's getting rediscovered because I'm like, oh, we've been doing this for a long time. We yeah. know. We know. At Christmas time, if you add maraschino cherries, oh. then it's on theme because it's green and red, you know. Okay. For heaven's sakes. So and now, uh, marsh marshmallows are optional. Like, people will argue whether you're supposed to have marshmallows or not. So, this is this. It's is, a point of contention. It is a point of contention. Because <laughs> the original recipe didn't, and then Jello came out with their own, and so Jello decided that it needed marshmallows. I need you to take a stand, though. Where do you stand on the mar? Where do you stand on it? You know, I hate to say this, but I recently t it tasted it without the marshmallows, and you know, I think I like it better. Okay, then can I can yeah, I have a little bit without course. the marshmallow? With look, the matching little cup that goes with the. Did you? Oh, the ma it is matching. Because it's supposed to be for your eggnog. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is one of your salads I have not had. That's all I'll yeah, yeah, okay. let me see here. No, you need two scoops. Okay, two scoops. Okay. <laughs> so this is napkins. without marshmallow. Without marshmallows, yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You're supposed to put nuts in it. I totally forgot. But I also forgot my rolling pin to smash my nut meat <laughs> with my stifled Minnesota peeling. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to... Amber, I love you. There are four ingredients in this, and you missed one of them. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've never put pecans in it. But if you put actual Four pistachios... Four ingredients. <laughs> hey, this is really hard work, you know. <laughs> I've been in the kitchen all day You're, slaving, young you, man. Uh, that's right. Okay, so add some nuts. Add some nuts, add some marshmallows if you want to. Those okay, are two that's optional. pretty good. Now, what yeah. is this? This is raspberry pretzel salad because you and Jeff did a thing about strawberry pretzel jello salad, and you'd never had raspberry. No. And so raspberry is so much better. This... We were unsure about yes. this, and Amber's right. Executive yeah. producer Jeff and I, uh, he, I had never tried this yep. before Jeff had me eat it, and I loved it. So this is the better version? This is the better version. And I think the, the thing with this salad is you have to put a ton of fruit in the jello. Lots of people just do like a layer of jello with a few pieces of fruit. I think the fruit kind of has to be the star. So you put tons of fruit just to kind of stick all the fruit together. How many, <laughs> how many ingredients in this one? There's a lot in that okay, one. Okay, yeah. That's a, we can't demo that one because we have to bake the crust first. There we go. Okay, yeah. so Amber's not just cooking today. When we come back, she's singing next. <laughs> with that Midwestern mom and if you uh, are new to us and you but you know we're on TikTok you're like oh she can sing yes you are you are you're a trained opera singer right I am. oh yeah. my goodness I went to school for this um, so it's shocking that I perform extravagantly weird stuff on the <laughs> That's no, so I think it's great. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get out of the way. What okay. are you singing here? I'm singing a holy night because it's in public domain so nobody can get us for copyright issues <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping us out of lawsuits. I appreciate that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Amber, that Midwestern mom. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Sing and earth 
Midwestern Mom. Follow her on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Her handle is That Midwestern Mom. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. That's lovely. Thank you. the show time to hear your thoughts your questions your concerns oh. we're opening up the Jason show mailbag I have all of those uh, first up a new viewer in Cedar Rapids Iowa hi uh, Tandia that's a beautiful name she writes I had my doubts about this show <laughs> After it took the time slot of the Rachel Ray show. Yeah. But to my surprise and delight, this is one of the best talk shows I've seen. <gasps> Thank you very much. Wow. I laugh out loud. Now look. You're very sweet. I wouldn't go that far. I laugh out loud several times during the hour. Jason would be great as a nighttime talk show host uh, and give the Jimmies a run for their money. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's very nice. Very nice. Uh, look, again, any, uh, you know, is, this is our last week of shows for 2023. It's the thing I'm most grateful for is all, we've been really embraced by all the new cities. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Cheryl is next. Hi, Cheryl. She says, I discovered the Jason show about three years ago. I wanted to say I wish I would have thought of the name Fallon for my daughter born 33 years ago. We, we ended up with Lindsay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay is lovely. Lindsay is fine. <laughs> Lindsay's more than fine. Yeah. That's so but if you have another kid, you can name her what everyone calls Fallon, which is Falcon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or or Fallon. Or Falcor. Falcor. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We we did get a piece of mail. Uh, I think it was last week. Jeff goes, you got to see this. And it was Dear Falcor. <laughs> and I was like, that sounds like a company that makes yeah. aluminum or yeah, something. It does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or I would toss in one more, the Fallinator. Fallinator? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Next, Amanda, Amanda sent us this video. Look, she says, baby Christian watches you every day and Aww. never looks away when you're talking. Aww. Oh, I wish I. Oh, look at that baby. <laughs> oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi. I wish I had that effect on my family. <laughs> yeah. <Aww>. Or you. <laughs> what? What'd you say? What'd you say? <laughs> Sarah sent us a picture of someone uh, in her home who loves our show. It's her dog uh, that watches. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Oh, look. That is so cute. Uh, Sarah says she loves the positivity of our show. Look at that cute puppy. I love it. Next up, many of you commented on our holiday movie hot take segment last uh -oh. week when Falcon admitted to <laughs> hating, absolutely hating It's a Wonderful Life. Sarah, Sarah says, I completely agree with you, Falcon, about It's a Wonderful Life. My dad loves it, and to me, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It yeah. Is. It is. Well, Capricorn72 on YouTube says, I agree with Felon and fell on the floor when she did her impression of Jimmy Stewart. His acting in that movie is awful. Well, Sherry, Sherry disagrees, saying, I love It's a Wonderful Life, and I don't agree that Love Actually and The Holiday are Christmas classics. Okay, fair. I watched well, Love. Well, yeah, you mean, are wrong. Okay. I mean, oh, I just, yeah. Oh, God. I watched Love Actually this weekend. Uh, remembered that is not a movie to watch with your kids. No. <laughs> I forgot. There about, are porn doubles in that. I yeah, did forget yeah. about that storyline. Uh, turn that off. And then I went to watch The Holiday, and it's not free, and your girl's cheap. But I hear it's coming to Hulu on December 24th for free. <laughs> Bjorn, Bjorn, can you get my phone so I can just buy her the $4 <laughs> rental? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Finally, many of you sent us messages about Oprah Winfrey's interview uh, with touchy-feely Drew Barrymore last week. Joelle says, I think, uh, I think it all the time. Drew, would you please get, your, get, uh, get out of our personal space? It drives me crazy, and it's so distracting when I watch the show. Yeah. I know. I love Drew, but... 
L177 on YouTube says, Drew rubbing Oprah's arm and holding her hand is so childish. So uh, she even goes on her knees sometimes. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've complained about that. And Gwen says, you were at least 50% right about the interview. Yes, the hand holding was way overboard. But at one point, Oprah has her hand on Drew's oh, leg. Okay. What the hell is this, Twister? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I just... This is we close keep enough. Space. This yeah, is, you know, it is. Have, it really is. We have a yes. Rudolph pillow between yes, us. Yeah. It's, you know, are you? I don't know this about you, because I'm a huggy. I am a huggy per. Are you touchy? Are you huggy? No. <laughs> Your your warmth is so uh, <laughs> contagious. No, but my my husband, when I first met him, I set it up where the first time we, cause we met on a dating app that he would meet at a work event I was hosting so that if I didn't like him, I could claim I had to go work. And he came, and the first time he met me, he's like, I'm a hugger, and he goes to hug me, and he wore this hideous leather bracelet and got caught in my hair and ripped my <laughs> hair out. And so... First of all, from that day forward, he's never said I'm a hugger. He just did that to touch me. Yeah. And he's never worn an accessory either. And I'm like, why? <laughs> he goes, I don't know. I panicked and went to Target before our date and bought a leather bracelet. <laughs> I was like, what? what? And so we're, we, we do hug each other. And I hug my daughter, but my mom's like, I'd love a hug occasionally, you know? I'm just not, I'm not like a big, yeah. Oh, God, I've hugged you before. I apologize. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. But, yeah, I'm not like overly. Do you prefer a handshake or something? Just like a rub. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. I'm just kidding. Four more days, people. <laughs> Four more days. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't forget, you can watch full <laughs> episodes of our show on YouTube. We post each day's episode along with clips of the show. Just search for The Jason Show and hit subscribe. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Only four more times I get to do that. Aww. That's right, yeah. It's time for the world's shortest segment. Well, Oreo, Oreo wants people to snack in style with a bright blue puffer jacket. Oh, no. The idea is that you can fill it up with Oreos <laughs> because it has a cookie arm patch. Yeah. A zipper that looks like a mini Oreo in it. And a cookie dispenser. I like uh, that. It's being dubbed the Snack It. Yes. Yeah. It's just a test right now <laughs> and not for sale. But if the demand is strong enough, Oreo may actually consider putting the Snack It up for sale. I'd buy it. Yeah. I want one. Where is the asteroid? Uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. The Snack It. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> what are you laughing at, audience? I don't know. We had a very productive commercial break there. Hey, I do want to say, speaking of that, uh, before I tell you about the swag stuff, um, we are live all this week, but then uh, for three weeks, we're going to be taking our winter break. We'll have new shows in the beginning of January, but when we come back um, in the middle of January, uh, come see us. Kendall will be back. Uh, we're going to bring Fallon back out into the woods and just leave yes. her out there, and then, yeah. Set me free. Set you free. I have been rehabilitated <laughs> <laughs> also in our swag you can go to eventbrite.com for tickets also in our swag store we have a couple new things we have a new uh, uh, just a simple I wanted a simple sweatshirt uh, with our logo here it is the gray sweatshirt features our logo and is available in sizes extra small to 4x and don't forget the store also has brand new stuff for the winter totes a warm blanket cigarette lighters everything you oh, want right there yeah we do not have cigarette lighters oh. anyway <laughs> That's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thanks to this audience. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.